evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to Walking Through the Word, brought to you by Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where we're pastored by Thurman Cunningham Sr., Reverend Thurman Cunningham Sr. is our pastor, and we thank you once again and welcome, welcome. The last time we were with you, we took a break, so, uh, so to speak, we took a break and we stretched our legs and we got a chance to know the people that we had been talking about and the things that we had done and the people that we had met and the things that they had taken us through, the experiences that they had. We stretched our legs, so to speak, on our journey and took a break from just rushing through and we reflected back on the things that we had talked about and the people that we had talked about. And now it's time to load back into uh, the car, load back into the van, load back into the bus, strap down and buckle up. All right, and we're right. headed somewhere different. We're headed in the same place, but Lord, we just hope that you can take us to a place where we can understand and know it, and, and know these people in an intimate way. All the right. last time we left off, we were with Abraham, and God had made a covenant with him, All a right. covenant of circumcision. Uh, he had told him that uh, Sarah would be the mother of this promised child. He changed his name. From Abram to Abraham. That's right. He changed her name from Sarah to Sarah. All right. And these, name, these names had significant meaning. He changed Abram, which meant exalted father, to Abraham, which meant father of multitude. All right. He changed Sarah's name, which Sarah would mean uh, my princess, and Sarah means a princess. All right. And these names had, had significant meaning. When he changed them. And and after he gave the covenant to circumcise all that was in Abraham's house. And Abraham circumcised all that was in his house. His son Ishmael, which was 13 years old at this point. Abraham, Abraham being 99 years old at this point, circumcised himself. He, became, he, he was circumcised. And this is where we find ourselves tonight. All Not right. going all the way back just the last that's the last episode that we had. All right. And now we'll start this journey once again, this divine destiny All right. journey. And we'll start out at chapter 18. We're going to let this unfold as we go through it. We'll start reading now. And the Lord, in verse 1, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the, in, the in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked in, and lo, Three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, fetch, be, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and, com and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes up, uh, uh, upon the, the heart. All right. And Abraham ran unto the, unto the herd, and fetched the calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hastened to, to dress it, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the, in the tent. And he said, I will surely return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it, and in, in, in the tent, in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of certainty bear a child, which I am old, which I am old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? 
At the time appointed, I will return with thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men arose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and, uh, and Abram went with them to bring them on the way. All right. Divine destiny. All right, all right. You have a lot going on here. You have a whole lot going on here. I was going to try to cover the whole chapter, but I'm not that ambitious. All right. And there's a different turn, a different spin after, after verse 16. So I decided just to handle one half at a time. All right. It starts off here saying, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, an ordinary day. This is something that men of that particular region would do. That right. time of the day, in the heat of the day, they would sit in the tent door to try to catch a breeze. All right. uh, the, the oaks of Mamre were all around, so he was shaded by the oaks. And he was trying, um, uh, for the most part, to just cool himself yeah. in the tent, yeah. in the door of the tent. Those that lived out in the country a long time ago, they understand what I'm saying. Right. When air conditioners weren't the convenience that we had. We All had right. fans in the windows. We had the windows up. And we saw, we saw any breeze that we could oh, yeah. in the heat of the day until yeah. it cooled down some. And then we'd go out and we'd do the things that we had to do. So this was just, by, by all practical purposes, an ordinary day. Yeah. Nothing, expe nothing special looking to happen. All right. And Abram said, and it says here in two, and he lifted, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Mm. He first sees them. All right. Then he reacts yes. to them. Yeah. He runs to them. Remember. This is a 99-year-old man. All right, all right. He could have very well took the he could have very well took the took the opinion that a lot of older men have, you come to me. Yeah, yeah. He could have took that particular stance. He could have thought about who he was to God. Yeah. And the conversation that he had had with the Lord on, on several occasions and how he would be the, the father of a nation of people. He could have let all of those things lifted him up. Yeah. He could have been lifted up in pride. He could have been so that he wasn't going to meet anybody. All right. I'll let them come to me. This is my house. They're walking. They're visiting me. You come to me. But he didn't because Abraham had been changed throughout his life. He had gone through an evolve. He had, he had, he had evolved. He had evolved right. from where he was to where he is now. He ran out and he understood the premise that if you obey yourself, that God will exalt you. All right, all right. He understand the premise. It says here in Matthew 23 and 12, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be obeyed. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. We need to understand this as we walk around sometimes with our head up high. All right. So high that you can't pick up, you can't see anything other than what's in front of you or up above you, and you miss out on everything else. Yeah. God wants a humble spirit so that he can bless us, so that he can give us what we need. Abraham understood that premise. He understood that particular opinion and he ran out. And not only did he run out to meet them, but after he got to where they were, he bowed himself All right. in humble abasement. All right. Yeah. He didn't know these men. Didn't know who they were as pastor say from Adam. All right. But he had humbled himself throughout his trial and throughout the trials that God had taken him through. And he had helped him to conquer or, or subdue armies. Remember, this is the All same right. Abraham that went and took back Lot after Lot had been captured by five different kings. All right. He could have been lifted up. He could have been prideful. But he fell down and bowed himself to those men. Not actually even knowing who they were. Three right. said, and he said, my Lord, capital A, shows an indication here that he may have, after he came upon them, understood more about who they were. All right. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Don't leave me. 
All right. Stay a little while. Don't go right now. Mm. Let me do something for you before you leave. Let me let a little water, I pray you, be fed and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Mm. All he want to do is make them comfortable. Now it's customary right. during that time, not mandatory. All right. That you provide water for the travelers that came through so that they could wash their sandy, dusty feet because they wore sandals. They wore sandals, so it was customary, yes. not mandatory, All right. All that right. they did. But because Abraham had gone through this evolution, this transformation that God had taken him through, his heart had become what God needed his heart to be so that God could bless him in the way that God wanted to bless him. All right. Where's your heart? Mm. Where is your heart? Is it lifted up? Are you so stuck on whatever it is that you've accomplished in life that God can't bless you with the rest of the thing that he has for you? All right. Have you put yourself up so lofty that God can't reach you to tell you what it is that he needs you to know? All right. He put himself in humble submission to these men. He held his head down. And then after he got up, he not only wanted them to feel comfortable, he would do the work. All right. He put in the work. He didn't call for somebody else to do it. He did it himself. All right. And let me, and, and, I, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your heart. Mm. Just whatever I can do for you. All right. No names have been changed. Exchanged. Nobody knows who anybody is. These people, these men, these strangers, these travelers are just being treated with hospitality by a man of God that loves God. All right, all right. And if you love God, you love God's people. That's right, that's right. Now, he may have, and this is just my speculation, no, don't hold it to me, because Hebrew says here in 13 and 2, yeah. be not forgetful to entertain strangers. All right. For thereby some have entertained angels All right, on the way. Yes. All right. Hebrew 13 and 2 says that. Yeah. So be careful how you treat people. Yeah. Be careful how you confront people. Yeah. When people come to you, you never know what that person is, and you know you never know how God is using that person or may use that person in your life. All right. All right. Don't look over people. Don't put yourself up over people. Makes no difference what your status is in society or in life. Or how much money you have, or how many resources you have, or how many people you have working for you, or people that you can just call it. Makes no difference who you are or where you are in life. Make sure that you treat everybody right. the way that you would have them to treat you. All right. That's the golden rule. Says he wants them to just sit down so that he can feed them so that he can wash their feet so that he can give them some rest from their journey. All right. And Abram hastened, this is sick, into the, into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hall. I need my, I, I, I got I to gotta include my wife in this. All right. Because I can't do it all by myself. Say, say, all right. Say. Remember that principle when you're working for God, that you can't do it all by yourself. All right, say, all right. You'll need some help every now and then. Yeah. You'll need some help. Don't be so lifted up once again. All right. Don't put yourself in such an important place that you're too prideful to ask for the help all that right, you need. Say. All right. Right. Three measures. Make three cakes. We're entertaining today, baby. Yeah. We're going to entertain these men. She doesn't know anything about the men. She doesn't understand exactly. All she's doing is what her husband has instructed her to do. All right, all right. She's being submissive unto her husband. Yeah. Mm, God. Doing what God has instructed him to do. Yeah. And she's following suit. All the blessings come when everything is in order. Pastor, it's a lesson for another day. All but right. when everything is in order, when everything is just like God intended for it to be, yeah. watch the prosperity come. All right. Watch the peace. Watch the calmness. Watch the solid, Watch all those things that God intends for us to be. 
happened. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted, and he hasted to dress it. This is a 99-year-old man. Run, because that's what the scripture said. It said Abraham ran unto the herd. He didn't go out there and pick up the oldest cow he had out there. Something that was about to die anyway. He didn't go get a sickly cow. He went and got the best cow that he had to give to these men that he didn't even know. To strangers that were passing by. He hadn't called any name. They hadn't called his yet. So this is just what Abraham had been inclined to do. All right. His first inclination was to do that that God wanted him to do. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. Now, after he's gotten the cake, the three uh, cakes fit, and after he's had the calves dressed, and Abram ran to the herd, and it says here in eight, and he took butter and milk. Oh, he dressing it up. He making this thing good. All right. Took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. He served. Yeah. He who is greatest of you should be the servant. That's a word. That's a word. You got you to gotta have the heart of a servant yeah. for God to bless you with what he wants to bless you with. Matthew 23 and 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. All right. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Matthew 10 and 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. All right. And All he right. that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. You'll get what you give. All yes, right. Yes. All right. He'll come back to you. But you got to be willing to give it. You got to be willing to give it. You got to be willing to pass it out before you can get it back. What you said, Pastor, right. on the Sam said, close hand. Can't ever have anything in it. Right. You keep what you got, yeah. but it doesn't grow. That's right. It doesn't multiply. And it says here, 9, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? Mm. And he said, Behold, in the tent. Now this has to be a little surprising to him. All right. You call my wife by name. Yeah. You're just traveling through this bad thing. Yeah. You're just making your way from one place to the other and you called my wife. You asked about my wife. You called her by her name. You didn't say, excuse me, man. Excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse me, sir. Where is your wife? You said, where is Sarah? As though you knew Sarah intimately. As though you knew me. As though you knew all about me. Psalm, Pam 139, 1 and 4 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Yeah. Thou knowest my down set, my uprising, thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Yeah. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all again. All right, all right. There's no secret when it comes to the Lord. All right. You can't hide it from him. He knows what you do. He knows what you think. Yeah. He knows what you think before you think it. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. I read that scripture for a particular reason. We're about to go into something here. And it said, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now this is this must be Sarah's first time hearing it. Mm. Remember the last lesson, he told Abraham. That this was good. This would this would happen. That don't go looking for Hagar. Don't go looking for Ishmael to be the promised child, the promised seed. That the seed would come through Sarah, but apparently he hadn't shared it with Sarah. 
Because it said here that Sarah heard it right. from the tent. Sarah was 90 something. You're 99. And now we're about to start having children. Don't be a little rough. Mm. It says here, 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. All right. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of when her biological clock had wound up time. Her biological clock was over time. Aye, aye. The springs were crooked. The springs were broken. Aye. She's 99. She's 90 some years old. Yeah. At this point, we're not even thinking about kids anymore. Right. That's the last thing on our mind. Right. We did everything we could. Now remember, Abraham is holding this because God has told him that this seed would come through Sarah. Yeah. That she would have princesses and kings would come from her. Yeah. But apparently Sarah hadn't heard it yet. Who knows that God can turn back the hands of time? Ah, all right. Oh, Tyrone Davis said, right, if I could only turn back all right, all right. the hands of time. Yeah. That's what Tyrone said. Yeah. Well, I know somebody that can yeah. turn back the hand of time. Yeah. He holds it in his hand. That's right. The clock is in his hand. He made the biological clock. Yeah. He made that that the biological clock goes by. Yeah, right. So there is nothing that you should hold to Hillary and say that God can do. I want you to understand tonight. I said we're going to get a chance to know these people into them. We're going to know about them. We're going to have. We're going to use these people for examples in our lives to achieve all right, all these right. goals in our lives that we set for ourselves. That possibly everybody say time then ran out. All right. Possibly they told you to your faith, yeah. but well, you probably need to go in a different direction. Yeah. Yeah. You probably need to try something else because you got old for this. Right. They're looking for younger people now yeah. for that particular position that right. you want to hold. All right. For that particular thing that you want to do, you know you ain't got too old. Don't be crazy now. All right. Use your common sense. Well, common sense and God sense doesn't add up. All right, all right. Algebraic formula than God's algebra doesn't go in the same place. Uh -huh. mm. Doesn't add up. All right. It says here, therefore, yeah. twelve, Sarah laid within herself. All right. Saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. You gonna throw me in? All right. Remember, he said that about her in early in previous chapter, how old she was, and now she saying the same thing. I'm waxed old, and so is my husband. All right. And now we're gonna have pleasure, and she laughed. Don't be too hard on Sarah because I probably would have bust out and laughed myself. All right. All right. All right. It probably would have been all kind of funny for me. Alright. If you know this would have happened and I'm getting these words. I don't want to laugh in your face, Lord, but good God, this just doesn't sound right. Alright. This doesn't sound right. How, how, how are we going to make this happen? How is this going to come to pass? How is this going to come to fruition? I tell you how to come to fruition. After Sarah laughed, this was said in 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a certainty bear a child which I am old? Then he said in 14, With strength is anything too hard for the Lord. All right. With a question mark behind. That yeah. question mark is for you. All right, all right. Is anything too hard for God? Have you gotten to a point in your life where you think this is it? That the last rung on the ladder has been climbed? All right. That the last mile has been walked? All that right. there's no more mountains to climb? That there's no more things to accomplish? There's no more things that you can succeed in? Any more accomplishments that you can have for your credit? Have you gotten to that point where you don't think that the Lord can work this marvelous and wonderful and, mir and miraculous thing in your life? Do you not believe in God? All right, all right. Do you not know who God is? 
Do you not know that he created everything? The moon, the star, all right, all right. the earth, the, the seas, the rivers, the creeks, all the waters, the birds, the, the everything that you see and survey, everything that you witness today, God created it. And you are putting limitation and marginalize the God of the universe. All right. You'll let people tell you that. You'll tell yourself that. I can't do that. I can't right. make it. It says here, and the Lord said, and it says here, there ain't anything too hard for God. At the appointed, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not. For she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Yeah. You know, a son name is gonna be he laughed. Uh, That's what Isaac uh, name stands for. Uh, he laughed. Yeah. So I mean all of this is prophetic. All this is in line. I believe that God has a distinct purpose for each and every one of us and a divine destiny for each and every one of us. Alright. I believe that regardless of what happens in our lives, that this is definite. This is going to happen. I know that there are marvelous and wonderful things for me. And I believe that there are marvelous and wonderful things for you. But you have to know that God's intentions for you are good. Yeah. Not to live a, a mediocrity, not to live a life of mediocrity. Right. Just existing. Right. Not living. All right. Just existing. Yes. Not living. Don't you want to live? God said that he wants you to live the abundance of life. Yeah. He wants you to live a fruitful life. Yeah. He doesn't want you to be a beggar. He wants you to be a lender. Yeah. He wants you to be the head. And he doesn't want you to be the tail. All right, all right. But now if you're going to stay back there of your own volition, then go ahead on and stay back there. I'm going to the front of the line. All right, all right. I'm going to the front of the line. And you can't pull me back there where you are. You can stay back there as long as you want to. Call me back there all you want. Beckon for me all you want to. If that's where you want to be, that's where you stay. <laughs> but I'm going to the front of the line. All right, all right. That's where he said I could be. That's where he said he wants me. And that's what I'm going to do. Romans 4 and 21. And I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Yes. All right, all right. I like them scriptures. Yeah. That line up with the word. I like those scriptures because it tells us that we can accomplish whatever we set our mind to. With God on our side, we cannot fail. Yeah, yeah. Yes. With God on our side, we cannot fail. Believe that. All right. Understand that. And it says here, because this, this is where the story takes a different turn. All right, all right. All right. 16, read that and finish it up. Because we got a lot to talk about. All right. Oh, it's going to get exciting here in a little bit. And it says here, and the men rose up from them and looked toward Sodom, and Abram went with them to bring them on the way. Why are they looking at Sodom? Why did they turn their faces toward Sodom? Why did they get through talking to Abraham and sharing him this good news, this happy and, 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 and joyful news with Abraham and Sarah, and now they get up and look towards Sodom. Oh, watch. They about to leave this house. All right. And they about to go take some, they about to go All take right. care of some business. All right, then. All right. Oh, and you got to come back to find out what that business is. All right. You got to come back and find out exactly what it is that's going on in Sodom that they done turned towards Sodom to see. Yeah. They going to Sodom. They ain't just going to stand and look at it. They going down there. Yeah. There's a lot to be seen in Sodom. Remember I told you, Sodom is a bad, bad place. Yeah. And gone unknown. Right. Come back. Come back. We back in the car. Now we we back in our conveyance. Now we're going forward. All right. We're going to the places that we always wanted to go and understand these scriptures like we've never understand, understood them before. We're going to walk this road together. We're going to journey this road together. Right. And I need you to come back. I want you to come back because everything that I'm so excited about I need you to be excited about yes. it too. Right. Because these, example, these examples are going to take us to higher height. Yes. Going to move us to a different place. Going to elevate. Amen. Let's pray.
Lord, we thank you, Lord, for these words. We thank you for these people. We thank you for the inspiration that you give us through these people. We thank you for the insightfulness, Lord, that you've shared with me, that I may be able to share with those that are listening, those that are here. Yep. Lord, I thank you, Lord, and I ask you just to bless those that, bless the ears and bless the heart to know that we can accomplish whatever we set our mind to, yep. if it be your will and if you be on our side. Trusting in you, leaning not to our own understanding, will take us to the next place yeah, that we so that we so desire to be. But we need you, Lord. Yes. We can't make it without you. We're trusting in you. Yes. We, we know that you can do it. And Lord, we believe in you for everything that comes in our life. Lord, we thank you right now. And we and as I, as I always say, Lord, amen. 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 And as I always say, respect yourself in peace. All right. All right. Amen.